is going to include, so this is an implicit derivative, and we're going to have to use some uh, of the rules, the more difficult rules from 3.3. So I want to find y prime when we start out with this equation. So could you solve for y? You can try. It's not going to be terribly easy, though. You're going to have to complete the cube or something like that. So it's going to be pretty challenging to solve for y. However, we can still find y prime. So how do we go about finding y prime? which is also known as dy dx. What's the answer to every question in this class? Derivative. Yeah, let's take a derivative. Good idea. So we're going to take a derivative. Do we take a y or an x derivative? So we're taking an x derivative of our equation. So I want to find dy dx, so I'm taking an x derivative. So I want you to take the derivative of the first two terms. They're similar to what we did yesterday. Yeah. And I will, you can try to take the derivative of the next term, but you're going to have a product rule going on. So you can definitely do the first two terms, their derivatives. They're really similar to the x squared, y squared one that we just did above. So we want to know uh, dy over dx, which is y prime. Okay. So if I took d dy of this whole thing, I would have to, at the end, basically reciprocate everything. Okay. Because I'd, be, I'd end up with dx over dy. So if we were solving for x prime, then we just solve for d over dy? Yeah. So if I leave it like this, what did I forget about? I mean, I haven't done any of the other terms, but what did I forget about in just the first two terms if I write this as the derivative? So what extra term did we get up here when I, we took an extra derivative? This is the previous problem. Yeah, we have an extra y prime. So whenever you take an x derivative of a function of y, you're going to get extra y prime at the end from the chain rule. So this is what I'm referring to right here. When you take an x derivative of a y function, you're going to get an extra y prime. So down where we took our derivative, we're going to get an extra y prime right there. We're taking an x derivative of a function of y. So any questions on that idea? Now we have to do the product rule right here. So let's bring the 9 outside and we'll write it as ddx of xy squared. What is the x derivative of 0? Zero, so that was easy. Any derivative of any number is going to be zero. So let's deal with this product rule right here. So if we over parenthesize, it looks like we already did, but I'll go even further. 
So we have x, y squared. So that's the derivative that we're trying to find. So a derivative of x is 1. So we have 1y squared plus x. The derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. Do not write y to the first power. This is what it would look like. So here's a perfect time to not write y to the first power, because it's going to be right next to a y prime. So I just took the derivative of what's right above it, and I used that constant multiple rule to move the, nine out, the negative 9 outside before I took my derivative. So this is tricky. Any questions about that product rule? What's the of the y squared? Oh, 1? That was the, just the derivative of x is 1. That's a good question. So this is the product rule. So this uv prime, and this is u prime v plus u v prime. So I did the product rule right here. So the two parts that don't change, there's a v in the first term that doesn't change. So I just wrap that in the parentheses so you can see it is right up from the top. And the second part, the u doesn't change. So I just brought that down inside the parentheses as well. So any questions on the product rule now that you see the u and the v and the u prime and the v prime? So we'll write everything else up and then figure out how in the world are we going to solve for y prime. So let's clean this up a little bit. Now we have x's and y's next to each other. I like to write things alphabetically ordered. So I'll write all my x terms before all my y terms and constant numbers out front. So it has a uniform ordering to all the terms. And I'll put my y prime after my y terms. So we have minus 9y squared minus 18 x y y prime equals 0. So all I did was order my terms a little more nicely and distribute my negative 9. So I circled what I'm trying to solve for. So algebra gets a little boring. So I think of algebra like a rescue operation. You're trying to get y prime by itself, destroy everything else. But you have to do it using math, algebra in this case. So how do I isolate y prime? I have to get rid of all of its friends. So when in doubt, PEMDAS. So when in doubt, go up the ladder. I don't have to do addition subtraction first. What would be a good multiplication or division to do? How about one third? <laughs> multiply by a third. Everything has got a factor of three. So if I multiply by a third, I'll reduce right away. So PEMDAS is more of a guide, not an actual rule. So you can do whichever operation you want first, you just have to make sure you do it carefully. So let's go ahead and multiply by a third. So we've got x squared plus y squared y prime minus 3y squared minus 6xy y prime. Still trying to solve for y prime. 
What algebra step should I do next? So how do we get rid of those two terms that don't have any highlighter on them? Yep, and how do we do that? Add them, subtract them. So we're doing the addition subtraction right now. So let's subtract them to the other side. So we're going to get 3 positive 3y squared minus x squared. So things are looking a little bit better now. It's a little silly to keep highlighting, but that's OK. What move should we make next? Factor, the best F word. So we're going to factor out. I got a times y prime, times y prime. So we'll factor that out. And we have y squared minus 6xy. What is the last step? So y is in one place, or y prime is in one place, we just divide. So we just have to unmultiply this. So y prime equals 3y squared minus x squared divided by y squared minus 6xy. Even if you can't solve for y, you should be able to solve for y prime after you take your derivative. And it will follow this pattern. Uh, the reason you'll be able to is because the chain rule will give you a multiplied by y prime no matter what your function started out as. Even if it was something weird like sine of the square root of y, something strange, you're going to get a times y prime at the end, no matter what your function might have done to y. When you take your derivative, you get a times y prime. And it will show up like this as a factor. You just have to get all the non-y prime terms out of there, just like we did here. So we, we distributed. Distribute, subtract. Factor it out y prime and then divide. All right. Good acronym. Don't swear for deer. If you swear for deer and hit a tree, it's probably worse than hitting the deer, but your insurance won't pay for it either, which is double bad. So, and your insurance goes up, which is probably already sky high. All right, so those are the four algebra steps that al work almost all the time, right there. They'll work almost all the time. I did a little tricky move where I multiplied at first. I could have not done that and just simplified at the very end. Everything would have an extra times three.